Gay City. Wow. What they used to call it? The crown jewel of Florida. Have a nice day. Crime Boss Rock A City is the kind of game that doesn't even feel like it should be real. It's like someone combined elements from the GTA games, it's got the gang flair of Saints Row and heist mechanics of Payday 2, then they decided to make it play like an FPS mobile game with roguelite elements. And that's game! I remember seeing trailers for this thing months back and thinking it looked absolutely awful. And then when it launched out of the blue early this week to mostly negative reviews, I thought that was going to be the final nail in the coffin. But you know what, it's been a slow week, and I'm still like a fly attracted to a steaming dumpster full of garbage with stuff like this, so I really couldn't help myself and felt compelled to check it out. Alright, alright, alright. And then what surprised me, even more than the time I found your mum's OnlyFans page, was that crime boss Rock A City really isn't that bad. I mean, it's definitely not amazing, but it often goes into the so bad that it's good territory that it actually manages to be entertaining. That is it, guys. We are beyond full. The whole thing's set in the very Miami-inspired Rock A City at some point in the 1990s, and you're playing as up-and-coming crime boss Travis Baker, played by Michael Madsen, whose likeness has even been carried across into the game, with him looking age-appropriate back to that point in his career when he was going around cutting off people's ears. The whole thing kicks off with this incredibly over-the-top prologue where you're in the middle of this bank heist gone wrong and seem to be getting shot at by every cop in the entire city, led by Sheriff Chuck Norris. Yeah, that's right. Chuck Norris. Sheriff goddamn fucking Norris. That's it. We end this. Yeah. Charge. Right, so a little history lesson for my younger viewers. There was a time back in the early to mid-2000s when Chuck Norris memes, I think, made up roughly 90% of meme culture on the internet. And his presence in this game should tell you exactly what you're in for. Enlighten me. Anyway, this whole prologue is just completely mindless as you mow down waves and waves of attacking SWAT, combined with some hilarious voice acting and body counts in the house playing in the background. Bye. A song I honestly don't think I've heard since back in high school. I even heard Bomb Funk MCs in the background at one point, and about all the soundtrack is missing is like a few songs by Cypress Hill or the Wu-Tang Clan, along with having NPCs holding Nokia phones to truly cement its 1990s era. And whether or not you're actually supposed to survive this shootout, I've got no idea, because eventually I got overwhelmed and killed. Turns out, though, that this is actually a pretty key feature. Because if Travis is killed at any point during the campaign, the whole thing restarts from day one, with the added benefit of letting you choose from a bunch of new permanent perks for your next playthrough. After a few deaths and restarts, for instance, I'd unlocked a silenced assault rifle along with throwing stars, which made some of those earlier missions much easier and much faster. Quietly drop a bug. So there is an actual sense of progression. You don't just feel like you're constantly bashing your head against the wall here. It does, however, frustratingly get to a point, though, where the game's kind of forcing you to restart, with the opposition just becoming downright crushing. Either way, every time the story begins again, it picks up when Baker's back in town and meeting up with an old acquaintance named Casey, played by Kim Bassinger. You're Kim Bassinger! It's Basinger. Why, thanks. And although they've done her best to carry across her likeness into the game engine too, I can't help but think here that she's given off strong visual novel vibes. You know what I'm talking about? Like one of those visual novels you'd see on Steam where all the grown-ups are hugging each other all the time. Why, thanks. There's another shootout at this point on a highway where two guys are transporting pills for Baker, and they're ambushed by a literal army of gangsters. And again, after doing my best to fight back against the never-ending influx of bad guys, I finally succumb to that age-old affliction of being shot too many times. I I really wish this was funny. <laughs> and look at that, they're hugging. From this point on, though, is where the campaign properly kicks off. And now you're tasked with building up Baker's Enterprise from nothing and taking over the city one block at a time. This mostly involves either copious amounts of killing or stealing, often both at the same time. Well, that's where we go riding into town. A whopping and a whopping. And the whole thing feels like it could have come out of the whole Xbox Live Arcade game era. Like it would have been some weird obscure title like Crime Lord or something, equally generic. Only it would have been a third person shooter instead of an FPS. And there'd be weird celebrity cameos in it as well, with people like LL Cool J or Rebecca Romaine. And it's funny to say that because Crime Boss has its own share of celebrity appearances too. Good luck with that. Bitch, shut the hell up. I mean, you've got Michael Madsen and Kim Basinger for starters, but then you've got Michael Rooker playing an enforcer named Touchdown. Cool, brother. Water under the bridge. 
Danny Trejo plays the boss of a rival gang and stop, collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Shut it, bitch. Yeah, that's right, man. Vanilla Ice is in this thing too. Word to your mother. Even Danny Glover shows up at one point, hilariously just named Gloves as a corrupt detective. And he's more or less just playing Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon. And of course, how could I forget Chuck fucking Norris playing the goddamn sheriff. All throughout the campaign, you'll get these random cinematics where it shows how he's monitoring your progress and making sure you don't get too big for your britches. And all up, it's a cast that wouldn't have felt out of place if this was an actual film made back in the 1990s. Only, it's not. It's a game, and not a very big budget one either, which comes with all the expected trimmings. That being, incredibly awful dialogue. My list, my business. Eat dick! Kind of thing that's clearly been written by someone who speaks English as a second language, not to mention, it's also clear these conversations have been recorded separately, which is why when people are talking to each other, they all sound like complete robots. It's like the kind of stuff you'd hear eavesdropping on NPCs in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Yeah. Hell yeah. With Nasara's new guys, the Graves. <clears throat> Graves. They're the, the pirates from the island, right? Born and raised, hard as nails. Fuck yeah. I fought much threats more fierce. There's even a side character with an incredibly out of place Australian accent. More than likely a vault. Here, in Rock A. And I just can't help but smile every time I hear someone with an Aussie accent in a video game. The gobbers never knew it. It just stands out so much to me when it's put side by side with an American one. You know, considering we're a country of such refined, unfiltered moral culture. If you're a f***ing fair dinkum f***ing full grown Aussie, this is what you'd have for breakfast, you f***ing dog c***ts. We'll say one thing too, I was genuinely surprised here at how good the game looks at times, even if it often does run like complete shit. The environments often look really good and have a lot of nice small details like water reflections and clever lighting, and the character models are highly detailed too, even some of the NPCs. Oh, look at this bloke! <laughs> look at this guy! Ah yeah, the 90s, the era of the high-cut one-piece swimsuits. Truly an elegant era. Weapon modeling and animations also look genuinely impressive, and even the minor things like the player's hands have a high amount of polish. It really feels like I'm playing one of those fake Unreal Engine remakes that you see on YouTube. Like someone's remade Vice City and the Unreal Engine, only this time it actually looks half decent, isn't completely soulless or created by content farming robots. Just a shame all these famous actors have had a serious beating from the Uncanny Valley bat. Oh, man. Now as for the actual gameplay, it's a first person shooter first and foremost and has a pretty rudimentary control scheme featuring sprinting, crouching, sliding and aiming down sights. And then it's all broken up largely into two main modes. You've got the Turf Wars and then the Heist missions of which you've either got repeatable ones that change every day or story specific ones which are a one and done deal. You can replace or hire new team members, you can take out a loan if you need a quick cash influx, and assets recovered from heist can then be sold on the black market. Then once you've done all you want to do, you end the day and you move on to the next. Story missions pretty much form the shortest component to the entire game, and these usually played from Baker's perspective, or in some instances, side characters, which then ends up with them joining the crew. <laughs> you can fuck up and fail these, which I have done multiple times, making that branch of the storyline completely shut off for the rest of that campaign, which again, kind of adds in another aspect to the whole replay factor. And of course, you can just get Baker outright killed, which becomes much more likely the more days you spend in a campaign when the resistance just becomes ridiculous. It's crazy. Boss, are you able to respond? Boss? Turf Wars, on the other hand, is just all out gang warfare, and it's all about capturing or defending sections of the city one at a time. In this mode, you're either playing as Touchdown when you're on the defense, or when you're trying to take an area over, you're playing as one of his many nameless, never-ending army of foot soldiers. Playing through this is again pretty basic, you just run around with whatever random weapon the game gives you, hopefully a pistol or an SMG, and then have to kill all the opposing gang members before they kill you. These, these punks can't hold our jock straps! Hopefully too, it gives you someone with a decent weapon, and not some idiot going into a gunfight with a crowbar or a knife. I mean, really man, what kind of asshole brings a knife to a gunfight? Brings a knife to a gunfight. Not to worry though, because if a soldier is killed, it just randomly throws you into the Air Jordans of another gang member. Assuming, of course, there's still someone left alive. If you're playing as Touchdown though, instead of that, you've got an LMG, which has got like 100 rounds in the bank ready to go. And with this thing, you just more or less commit all that genocide on these assaulting asswipes. 
Totally worth it too, just to hear Michael Rooker talking complete smack and sounding like an utter psychopath. So really just Michael Rooker in general. Strap the fuck in, bitch. This mode kind of reminded me of that old Scarface game, where you'd be taking over the little pockets of the city, which is kind of funny to say, considering both games are set in very Miami-inspired locations and involve peddling chemical substances on the streets. Either way, once you've successfully killed all the gang members, that section of the city is yours and your daily revenue is increased. The thing is though, to take over turf you first need to have soldiers, which obviously cost money. And each area of the city has different degrees of resistance requiring more or less soldiers. Then to make it even more confusing, there's different tiers of soldiers as well, with three in total. So if your guys are only tier one, well, they'll be carrying around crappy weapons like baseball bats and pistols, and that ain't gonna do jack shit against tier three enemies. Savvy? The other catch is that your captured turf is constantly going to come under attack by rival gangs. And it gets to the point where you spend more money and resources simply holding down your own turf than capturing new ones. At around the halfway mark, when you've got maybe 50% or so of the city under your belt, it becomes a really tedious process, because you can only use a soldier once a day. Once they've been in combat, they're done, you know, assuming of course they're still alive. And it gets to that point where simply holding your own becomes too expensive in cash and manpower, and you can't even consider trying to take over new areas. These areas you fight in also start to become really repetitive, and there's no flow or structure to any of them. You're just fighting in these giant urban environments with bugger all cover, and enemies just seem to spawn from all directions to attack you. It really does seem like they want you to fail these eventually, which I guess ties into the whole roguelike element, and just like Baker, you can get perks for touchdown and the foot soldiers to really buff them up. For that, we're gonna need a stronger force. But I just don't know how many people are really gonna wanna have to fail something half a dozen times. So you can artificially upgrade these nameless gangbangers to the point where they don't get their asses handed to them. Hell of a contest, we kicked ass. Heists, on the other hand, are where you can really start to feel the GTA and the payday influences. Now, heists are randomly generated missions that pop up on the map every day, and these can be simple things like robbing jewelry stores, robbing banks, or looting warehouses. Through to more combat-focused ones, like breaking into an armored truck with an electric saw. Yeah, we've ever seen that before. There we go. And along with Baker handling these himself, you can also hire a bunch of dynamic go-getters to help carry them out. All of whom have different weapon loadouts, perks, and stats. Now some of these are very clearly just randomly generated off a bunch of presets. Like this guy here who looks like Tommy Vassetti. There this guy looks like Tommy Vassetti from Vice City. Like look at the shirt, see? He's got even got like yeah. the Mac 10 and the gold chain. <laughs> yeah, if Tommy Vassetti ever fell out of the tallest ugly tree in the forest. <laughs> But then there's the more unique ones, which often have really good loadouts, and these guys are the ones you want to save up your hard-earned dollar dues for. Like at one point I hired a chick named Runaway who excelled at two things, stealth and unresolved daddy issues. And once I had her on my team, sneaking through heists without getting detected became a hell of a lot easier. Killed one no life, but it was Oshosh. In fact, you know what? You really actually have to commend me for my skills of being able to recognize such raw talent. I mean, I've clearly got a knack here for picking the right people for the right job. Stop trembling and give me your hands. These guys also have their own personal side missions you need to complete, which you're gonna get real familiar with. That is if you replay the campaign as many times as I did. Bring it! For all of these heists, the idea is to try to take a stealthier approach. And that means staying away from security cameras and avoiding detection. And for certain heists, you can even turn off the security system entirely if you manage to find the right room. Camera dislocated. And I gotta say, this component of the game, it actually works okay for the most part. So you don't try nothing. Subduing civilians and security guards is about as easy as a single button press to intimidate them, at which point they're going to drop to their knees and can be tied up or herded around so they're not left out in the open. Yo, back on the ground. For the less desirable folks that the world is hardly going to miss, you can just outright take them out with a stealth kill, then somehow magically stuff their entire corpse into a duffel bag for easy transportation. Something which is both hilarious but also deeply disturbing at the same time. Bed Bed Once you find the loot, you grab as much as you can, sh shoving it in up to three bags before then running to the escape vehicle and loading it all into the back before you make your getaway and the heist ends. That was fucking beautiful. Hopefully not attracting too many cops in the process, because if you do get detected, at that point, all subterfuge just goes out the window, and you end up having to shoot a never-ending supply of gun-toting goody-two-shoes. 
when the cops turn up, all precision just goes out the window, and you're really just trying to loot stuff as fast as possible before then hauling ass. Get more rounds. Ready to get back in there. Because the longer you take here, the more cops they're gonna send in. Eventually sending in armored dudes that look like the bulldozers from Payday 2. So overall, it's a simple structure and easy to get the hang of once you understand the basics. But the issue is that these heists can either be very good or very bad depending on the RNG. Seems they really want to make the player stick with the whole permadeath thing, which means there's no way to restart these in the menu if you fuck up and want to give it another go, outside of just quitting out of the game entirely before the autosave kicks in. These repeatable heists are also randomly generated, which means you'll be seeing the same looking three or four locations over and over, but every time you play it, they swapped around the placement of the guards, cameras, and the loot. So sometimes you go through a warehouse smashing boxes for five minutes, God damn it, ain't here. until you finally find the one you need, but then other times it's going to be in the first box you open. yippee ki stash. I've had heists where the loot I had to grab was even on the outside of the building, completely unguarded, but then other times where there were multiple enemies standing right in front of what I needed. I believe she is half full. Once you buy a silenced weapon though, it all becomes completely trivial. Because you can cap everyone in the head before they can even react. Probably kind of why they gatekeep silenced weapons for so long. The criminal had to go, but we kept it quiet. But then even the rewards for these also seems randomly generated. And it's often just not very cost effective, especially given the time it takes to complete them. Very nice. <laughs> I mean, let's break down this one, right? Robbing an armored truck, a mission which is almost entirely combat and has a high risk of getting your characters killed. Right, so for this one, my take's apparently going to be around 22,000, right? However, there's also 4,000 for the mission prep, whatever that means along with whatever cut the heist is going to make on top of it, you know, because they got to get paid. So maybe all up here, I might get around 15 or 16 grand. You know what I mean? It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. Give me some goddamn cover. The better alternative to these are the story heists, where you're taking down even bigger targets. And these are the ones you can only pull off once in a campaign. And these, of course, are worth the hassle, but the difficulty for these just feels fucking insane. I mean, this one here called Money Train just flat out begins with you on a subway platform getting shot at from all directions. And at this point, you've still got to saw open the train, grab all the loot from inside, and then make it down a nearby street full of enemies to the extraction point. Good luck with that. Bitch, shut the hell up. Eventually, you're probably gonna get sick of doing the same handful of heists and turf wars over and over. And the other option here is the cooperative multiplayer mode, broken down into either Crime Time or Urban Legends. Now, Crime Time is really just the same as the heist in the single player mode, choosing from a bunch of randomly generated ones which appear on the exact same map screen. Again, able to play as randomly generated heisters. This actually kind of reminds me a lot of the multiplayer mode in Kane and Lynch 2, another game which barely anyone ever played. The bigger and better heists have to be bought with contracts, and these give you bigger rewards, but these harder contracts are next to impossible to complete with these basic heisters, because these starting guys just don't have any decent weapons or perks. That was useless. So, what do you do? Well, good question. What you do is you play the Urban Legends, which are co-op missions that are kind of similar to the story missions in the single player. Now, for these, you can play as those unique heisters, and these guys actually have decent gear and perks. And if you manage to beat all three stages of an Urban Legend mission with three stars, it then unlocks that unique character you played as, which can then be used over in the Crime Time mode. Got the gist. The only issue is that this is really hard to do because this mode doesn't seem to scale depending on the amount of plays you've got in your group. <sighs> you've essentially got to get through three levels back to back without any single fuck ups. So if you make it to the third stage flawlessly, but then screw up what the optional objective was, well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, bitch, but you've just wasted your time. And the fact that there is so much RNG again involved in these, but ain't helping either. Like security cameras or patrolling guards being put in the most asshole of places is something that's going to change from run to run. And it can really make or break your entire playthrough. Plus, it also just feels kind of pointless. I mean, you're doing all of this to play as a better character in a game mode that doesn't really have any kind of end goal anyway. I mean, there's no leveling up or anything like that, there's no hidden weapons, and all the cash you earn is just spent on buying intel to complete the same missions you've already played a dozen times. It's just this time you're playing with mates. So yeah, it's, it's kind of dog shit, like it's a really bad system of unlocking characters.
And on that note, you do want to be playing the multiplayer with friends or at least other people and not bots, because with actual humans, it makes it far easier to coordinate everyone's movements. Get down! Hey, no movement. Security Stop guard, moving. security guard. You down! At one mission, even in a group comprised of mostly strangers, we all still organized tying up the civilians and getting the loot to the escape van without pissing off the cops. So yeah, having said that, I mean, I still did enjoy playing through the multiplayer and coordinating heists and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, how many times are you going to want to do that before the whole thing just starts to get boring? <laughs> Look at this style, oh, you see that? And I realize the irony of asking that question when it's a game that seems targeted at payday players, the kind of people who will sink thousands of hours into the same mission, but here it just kind of seems like it's a half-assed tacked on game mode where the devs haven't really figured out what the end game is supposed to be. Game of the year. Oh, what about on this guy? Oh, it's Muscle Beach. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what Crime Boss feels like overall. It's a decent game with a pretty compelling premise and concept, but it just never felt like they thought the whole thing through or went back in and balanced and smoothed everything out. The ultimate shame there too is that because it seems absolutely no one is playing this, all the problems it has are probably never going to get fixed, and yeah, get it. I mean, what's the incentive for devs to fix a game that no one's playing? And why it really stings the most is that I think this could have been a really fun little game to waste a couple of weeks on with mates if it just had a bit more polish. Yeah, that's kind of that, that's kind of killed it for me, to be honest. Like, Even the campaign in the state that it's in kept me busy for 20 odd hours. That was a costly mistake. And with a little more structure and balancing over the way the challenge ramps up, I probably would have sunk another 5 or 10 hours into it too. I think it is probably priced about right though, considering the overall amount of content, and if you can get into it with a few mates, well, you will get your money's worth, but I don't know what else to tell you, just keep in mind what you're getting yourself into, and don't set your expectations too high. You know, if 1990s era Michael Madsen snorting blow and banging bimbos wasn't already a dead giveaway. Try to bitch.